This is Dust War Journal's Mail Call special for episode 41. So welcome back. We haven't really gone anywhere. Well, we've been, we did take a little bit, a little bit of a you break. Do lie. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is the same day as we recorded. Yeah, we're back. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We've gone back. In time. No, not not really. Oh, okay. <laughs> back in back in place. Yeah, we're, <laughs> we're, and I'm back in black. No, it's not. <laughs> not even that. It's not even back. But it's back in black. With yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah very more black. coffee, 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 coffee. Coffee for the people. Mm, no, 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 no. Coffee, 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 coffee for right, my yummy, so, yummy, yummy, yummy. So uh, we are going to go through our mailbag and see what questions we have got from our mm. fine listeners out there. First off, we have a question from Brian Keith Younes. And now that Paradise Lost has set a precedent for theater-specific optional special rules. What theaters and associated special rules can you think up for your homegrown scenarios? Myself, I'm looking at making another pass at my campaign set in the secret city in Alaska and updating the special conditions chart I adapted from the Dust Adventure rules for miniatures battles. Uh, so they will be more like the new rules. Then I will probably do the same for my Dust Tactics campaign updates. Right. Well, we, we did talk a little bit about this when we went out for, for some dinner. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we, yeah, there's some, some interesting things we thought of. Where, I mean, for, for our <laughs> personal sakes, I mean, we, we did try to, what, what could we do uh, in that way? And just maybe do a, a three scenario, like theater based on... Uh, on the Nordic countries, and what could, what did we come up with? Well, we came up with uh, fish, bad weather, and uh, fairy tale creatures, basically. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, and the reason we, we perhaps don't want to say too much on that now, uh, Brian, is not to be uh, coy or, uh, yeah, well, in some aspect we might probably want to be coy, but it's because I actually think that the, the Nordic mythical creature thing yeah. I thought of, uh, I think could actually be a scenario I could perhaps post for the tournament, uh, for the competition. Yeah. <laughs> so that, therefore, I just, I'm going to hold a little bit on that, but it's set in the, the Nordic uh, climate, so to speak. You had a specially interesting thing that spawn off weather, uh, I think. We could not say more than that, but mm -hmm. I, I really hope you're going to spin on that and do it for Nordic. I am planning to try and make something happen and make a scenario with that uh, idea in mind for Nordic. We'll see how that turns out. Yeah, and yeah. here on the west coast in Sweden, uh, we are rumored, even though two out of three here is vegetarian, <laughs> we are rumored to only eat fish and fish creatures. Yeah. Uh, and we are actually not right in our heads the most <laughs> Gothenburg people think because we don't eat fish and yeah and even I, if I do and, even if I don't no, do you, eat meat I don't eat fish no so. I so. <laughs> <laughs> we are like the three oddities in so many <laughs> ways but but we had a, a little thing on a goof spin yeah for fish yeah ah uh, We'll have to have an expert like Max on yeah. that scenario because and he I, is like the lobster. And I think and the, if if we were going to do a, a kind crabs. of paradise, no. <laughs> if we would do a, so, sort Sorry. of like a paradise lost style theater, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think mm. that fish might be mm. kind of the uh, the all encompassing theme, like mm. the pizzas and yeah, yeah. <laughs> the vodka thing. Yeah. It, could, it, could, it could be shrimps. It could be lobsters. It could mm. be crabs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, well, yeah. Uh, Eel could actually be also, yeah, um, or something with the jellyfish, maybe. Yeah, jellyfish, salmon. Uh, we just we just yeah, listing so just every o ocean sea creature stuff. we know now. <laughs> ocean Seal. stuff. Yeah, whale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't really see that much seal, no, no, no. <laughs> unfortunately, mostly no. in the zoos. No, oh, yeah, well. Uh, right, now we have a bunch of questions from our Danish friend Lasse Dahl. Yeah, yeah, uh, in real life, the Allied powers made extensive use of colonial troops. How do you think those would be re best represented in dust? Um, well, they could be like, we, we did hear Paolo talk a little about, about the minor powers mm -hmm. uh, for, for the Axis, which would uh, involve the Italians, and they could be, do something similar, I think, for the Allied as well. So that's mm. a, a good place for colonial troops, I would think. Yeah, this is an interesting uh, thought. Uh, I'm not sure if it's really a possible or even a good idea to make it, in that case, like, uh, like a separate specific faction, because, I mean, colonial troops were 
all over the place and yeah. very diverse and very you know not coherent at all basically but i also I, I kind of feel a little bit that that's how the desert scorpions work for mm-hmm. me because you have you know all kinds of different troops there kind of thrown mm-hmm. together so so for me it's it's th- that it's basically done already a little bit in in a way we do have australians in there so yeah you, yeah f- um, french and uh, yeah all mm-hmm. kinds of there, there, there's a lot of British troops that is not there at the moment. So yeah. I, I sincerely hope that what they will do is they will do some more head releases. I do remember, I think Paolo said they hadn't sold that well, so there wasn't a big oh. success. Mm. I'm, I hope I'm wrong in that memory. I hope that is a bad memory from a nightmare and when I'm <laughs> waking up sweating or something like that. But I, Because that it basically... There are, and perhaps a weapons brew then. I mean, the curry knives and the stuff like that. I yeah. mean, there are a lot of small special things you want to be able to add to some units to make them that special look. Uh, not everyone perhaps wants to do like I did and make kilts on my for my yeah. Scottish, but I mean, some and those berets with the little um, what's with the bun up mm-hmm. side of the Scottish, it's some Scottish heads, some Scottish perhaps leg supplements or something mm. like that, or the uh, more of the different. Uh, the the I mean, I would love to have a uh, five squad units with like an Indian uh, uh, turban, yeah, oh, yeah. that Ooh, would be man. so cool and. And perhaps though they, those should have a different type of rifle as well. I'm not quite sure mm. how that just... It would be cool to have a little bit more of, of a selection to choose from. Yeah. But um, uh, I don't know how, how I would implement it. Maybe make them not not a specific faction, either like block units or you know a ru- new rule that they count as whatever mm, yeah. sub faction you want basically so you can have like one unit or two units or something mm. like that yeah just to make it make your army a little bit more flavorful mm-hmm. yeah but you have to also remember that uh, just if you put uh, french or uh, canadian hats on your englishman or your your british troops i mean mm. or the allied troops rather i mean they you don't treat them as a spe- special unit. They are no. not special in any way. They're just rangers. Mm-hmm. So uh, I, I think head swaps is the preferred. Uh, it's not. Yeah. It's just my. So. Mm, All right. Next question from Lasse. Mm-hmm. Considering the increased number of special rules introduced to the game, are they starting to affect the game play time negatively? Should some rules be consolidated or made simpler to increase the pace of the game? Well, there, there was quite a lot of specific scenario rules for Paradise Lost, for instance. Uh, but that only really uh, encompasses those games when you play those scenarios. So... Overall, I, well, of course, there's some special rules for some of the special units, of course. Um, but overall, uh, I don't really feel that the game as a whole has been affected that much. The word you're searching for is no. I'm sorry. Uh, it's very easy. No, uh, uh, no, I know, I know, I know, I know. And I can... Yeah, I don't really see that as a problem either. No. I'm not sure exactly what special rules Lass is talking no. about here. Uh, but as a whole... Uh, I mean, there aren't too many layers of rules impacting um, no. each other, and uh, you don't really have to remember how many different rules interact. I mean, mm. each rule basically says, do it like this. Okay, fine. That's how it works. So, for me, the game is still pretty simple. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm. and, and, and these new stuff in, in uh, Paradise Lost book... Once you have played a couple of scenarios, you will get the hang of it, basically. Oh, and and yeah. it's, those are sort of overall rules affecting the entire battlefield, affecting both players. So uh, you kind of go with it together. You don't have to remember everything by yourself all the time. So Yeah, and, and just remembering old debates between me and Magnus, because uh, back in the day when we wanted, or at least I especially wanted... To flavor out things, I have always been the uh, uh, the ones who had uh, talked about. We need more skills. We need more rules. We need mm-hmm. more diversity because the more thing you can do, the more interesting it will be. Mm-hmm. And usually, Magnus just holds me back and says, "No, no, no, the, you can't do that new rule because that is 
it's going to be strange for people to do that rule and because now now we should use just the rules we have but no no this is a new scenario yeah, we do something yeah, new exactly. and it's, it's a super tricky thing i think olivier is doing a fantastic job as a game designer to mm. both expand the game with new rules we have seen it uh, a bunch of them in the in the latest books yeah uh, but still, what I'm talking about is when some games, they kind of stack rules on top of each other. Okay, I have this yeah. rule, for and the, I for can the counter same it situation. with this rule, yeah. but then I can counter that with this, yeah. and, and you have layers upon layers with rules. Yeah. And that, I, I don't want to see no. that, but I still mm-hmm. think that Dust uh, manages t- to keep it simple enough and clear enough and not too many layers of, of stuff on top of each other. So. Yeah, yeah. So uh, just to skip around a little bit in the order here, because I felt that uh, the fourth question is actually more relevant to, to this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the fourth question here <laughs> from, from Lasse, mm-hmm. should there be a counter to damage resilience? Because of how damage resilience works, weapons that deal skull damage to vehicles are often rendered ineffective against vehicles with damage resilience. And uh, yeah, that is a point that very true in a way uh, mm. but is it a problem no uh, the the, the uh, um, this uh, well the thing is um, damage resilience was better before just as Tesla was uh, unfortunately and I'm sorry community the community was not smart enough they couldn't handle the tesla and the damage resilience mm-hmm. rules so olivier had to dumb down the rule mm-hmm. and make it simple because not everyone was understanding it mm-hmm. uh and it was better before but we have more players now so no don't touch it <laughs> have it this way this is the best way for the biggest possible mm-hmm. game i'm sorry this is a little bit harsh some of you might be offended mm-hmm. but seriously it was just about brain capacity and people didn't have it so Maybe, sorry, sorry. but 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 it is true what you say that the the damage resilience rule has already been nerfed yeah. uh, compared to how it used to be. So uh, nerfing it even more might not be the answer, really. Mm-hmm. No, no, uh, I'm not. Uh, obviously, uh, <laughs> it seems to me that Lasse thinks that damage resilience is way too good or mm-hmm. too cheap, point wise, and I disagree with that. I really don't see it as that big of a problem, and I definitely don't think that uh, skull damage weapons are rendered ineffective usually it means that you have to hit the vehicle like one more time Mm. with that weapon because the second time it's super unlikely that it will survive and I just like to point out because it's hard uh, sometimes especially since English is not my native language uh, uh, I don't have mind picking a fight with people, but this one was not a fight with Lasse. This is what's with the general masses. I'm not saying yeah. at all that Lasse, because he's not no, saying no, no, it here. Of course, no, yeah. no, but if he mm. was saying that yeah, it yeah. was mm. worse before it's better now, then I would pick a fight with him. But <laughs> that's not what he's saying. No, no. So right now, I'm friends with Lasse. Now <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's all hugs uh, and hugs, baby. So <laughs> I don't know how many remembers the, the kind of old damage resilient, how no. that worked. And for me, it's it's both pros and cons, mm-hmm. basically, of how it works. Yeah. Yes, the, the skills for multi-wound models, like mainly vehicles, but also some, car- some heroes, uh, damage resilience is not as good as it used to be. But still, in the old version, especially, I would say, against vehicles, because they usually have more damage boxes, it, it could become very dicey, very swingy. Yeah, you could survive hit after hit after hit, and like I said, nowadays you can't really do that. You will very likely survive that first hit, or maybe even two hits, but mm-hmm. but the vehicle and, will go down. And that's fine because I think that is the point of the rule. Yes. That is what the skill is supposed to do. Yeah. Uh, if you and also if you look at, uh, it's not universally true, but uh, with some units, if you compare them. You can see that those that have damage resilience have less hit points than those that don't. Well, yeah, well, th- when they did the revamp of the damage resilience, they had to revamp all the Russian tanks. And that's why the Russian tanks went from, I mean, type 6 had five wounds before, now it has seven. Yeah. Because they were dumbing down the damage resilience, so they needed more wounds. 
uh, people could argue, and some have, that they still have too many wounds and stuff like that, and they're still <laughs> overpriced and, and underpriced, so to speak. Uh, but that's another discussion uh, if we go off out of the uh, damage resilience uh, question, so to speak. But, but um, um, well, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I've said uh, Lasse also s- writes here that he thinks uh, there should be some counter to damage resilience. Um, for example, the special VK-based weapons like laser Tesla, phaser, uh, and stuff like that should ignore damage resilience. And I think those weapons would be too good if they did. Just straight up. And then we also get back to that mm. with layers of rules. That I have this yeah. rule, but mm. yeah. countered by this, countered by this. But so. what we've been talking about back and forth, both privately and on the podcast, is that we feel like the the phasers aren't that special. And uh, especially that the IGN... Uh, um, the rail guns. The rail gun yeah, has yeah, taken over are, and something mm-hmm. like that. So perhaps... Perhaps phasers could get something like that. That perhaps uh, that you have to re-roll damage more. resilience if you have it or something. Perhaps it's too much layer upon layer. I I don't know. It would, but it would be I, interesting because German infantry have damage resilience and Russian tanks. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, and Russian tanks has them. Some mm. of them, not all walkers and stuff mm. like that. So, to getting the Allied, especially, I mean, to see an Allied Cobra again on the da- battle table, yeah. wh- why not let them target those heavier troops, those hard hitters? So, when you come with a normal Allied t- t- tank or whatever you want, uh, you, you don't, are not as sure of hitting or killing your opponent. That's why you want to bring one or two facers uh, mm. Or perhaps it's just the tank phases that needs to be doing this. I mean, look at the Pershing and the uh, EC-8 or something like that. Perhaps if they just got a little, perhaps... I'm, I'm just freebasing here, so... It, it I like just... it. I like the idea, uh, but it, it, does have, it does go into that uh, layer upon layer thing that mm-hmm. you talked about, Magnus. Uh, but if it's... If it's limited to one type of special weapon or even just a subset of them, if it's just the ones that are on vehicles or tanks, that might work. Um, I'm not sure how <laughs> if, if it should be that, um, but, but I like the idea uh, as, as a thought experiment, at least. Mm-hmm. And the, 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 the next step in that sort of thought is that if, if such a change would happen, then, of course... You would immediately need to look at all the point costs for everything. Of course. Everything involved. <laughs> Not if you do it for Allied, Phaser, Walker, Tanks. <laughs> because all of those are overpriced. That we are in agreement with. We have said it mm. so many times. They, but they, but what, about, what about those Russians, Walkers, that have damage resilience? Do you feel that they would still be worth the point cost? Yeah, yeah. Because it will be... Okay, if I... Because those Walkers... Um, tanks that have the phasers for the allies are not good enough I can still blunt them to oblivion I can pulverize those with my Russian tanks and my Russian walkers I feel no I, I don't, I, I'm not getting even a cold sweat in my little pinky here <laughs> uh, if I'm just saying that it could be um, so, so you, what you're saying is that the SSU tanks are completely overpowered. That, that, that's know. what I'm hearing. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know what you're hearing, but <laughs> I'm surprised how go- well your ears have been functioning all day. So, it, it's starting to get a little bit late now. It's past your bedtime, and you, it's just your third cup of coffee. So, no, but seriously, man, ah, uh, <laughs> or at least we're trying to fight because we're so much in agreement. In, in yeah, the last we need segment. to pick a fight. Then. Yeah, we need to pick a fight. Ah. Uh, I'm going to pick a fight. No, I'm, I'm, seriously. Um, the Russian tank and uh, a, um, Walker fleet is better than the Allied ones because even the, tes- uh, the, the Teslas are better 
walker to walker, tank to tank, than the phasers are. But the, they also no, they do uh, have a, a different type of battlefield role, I feel. I mean, the mm-hmm. Russian tanks, for instance, they are mainline battleground, fr- frontline tanks. They yeah. are supposed to just go ahead and just crush everything in their way and get in your face. And I don't feel that's the, necessarily the case with the other ones. So I think the problem here is not that the that the Russian tanks and damage resilience is overpowered. In this case, is rather that uh, phasers are yeah. underpowered. That that's that's why I'm not caring too much about the Russian. Uh, I still think it's an even pair between Russian and uh, Axis. Uh, and I um, sincerely, since I, yesterday I played Axis and wiped both KV 47s left and right mm. with my Germans. So there's no problem annihilating a lot of Russian tanks with German troops no. if you have the right one and know how to use them. No. Uh, even I, an anti-Axis, can do that. So I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I think that the balance of the game is, for the most part, better than I feel that many people seem to think out there. Okay, yeah. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. There, I mean, I of course, I have my opinions on, on stuff that are too expensive mm-hmm. or, or too cheap. And uh, we have talked about the, the phases before, and yeah. we talked about the... Uh, the EC8 and the Super Pershing and everything, and I think those are too expensive points-wise for different reasons. Uh, but I don't really think we need to to see this, you know, drastic change or new rules. I think it's a, just points tweaks here and there mm. will solve this problem. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I don't I don't see it as a big problem, and I see it as a fairly easy fix, like in the in the next edition of the game. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, I I agree with everything the, except one that uh, tweaking one little rule for the allies eh, instead of taking every tank and going eh, it's also to me an easy fix. <coughs> and well, I, I, you I heard have that. A dial, I can yeah, dial it one there or one there. Everyone likes <coughs> to be buffed and nobody likes to be nerfed. So you yeah. would rather buff something than nerf yeah. something if possible. <laughs> so even yeah, though a point but, reduction is a buff. So <coughs> yeah, but I mean. Uh, um, Going back to, to the specifics of the phaser, yes, I also think that uh, maybe not all of them, but, but uh, definitely like the Cobra and some other stuff are a bit too expensive. Mm-hmm. Uh, and nowadays, I think also it's, it's slightly a problem with the railguns that they are also ignoring cover. Yeah, Same as the are... phaser, but they have a bunch of more stuff that they do. So they are like phasers on steroids or something yeah so and that was a we heard a lot of talk about that and they, it's a little bit unfortunate that they overlap that much i mean they have completely different uh, profiles in amounts to how they roll dice mm-hmm. uh, so in practice when you play it feels very different but i can definitely understand uh, the basic idea when you just read it on paper yeah. they de- really feel very similar mm-hmm. That's also an argument to me, though, to dwarf, to, to tweak the phaser rule just mm-hmm. a little. Not much, just a little. Yeah. Just a little. <laughs> <laughs> Meet me right. in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but as a, as a counterpoint to this, uh, the final question from Lasse. Have the pr- proliferation of cheap anti-tank options made the more expensive vehicles too weak? Especially Blutkreutz, Endak and Spetsnaz have easy access to various cheap options, options that make vehicles melt. <sighs> well... We, we, we touched a little bit on it when we ate a few uh, moments ago, and mm. it was like, uh, yeah, well, one can always talk a little bit about perhaps a, perhaps a special cover save for vehicles if they're fired on by infantry, but then it's so it's so hard because then I think then I think actually the mythos big creatures with damage resilience and stuff like that need to have that cover save as well, and then mm. they will be horrendous to try to take out now they are quite okay but that step up i think would be so bad mm. and we can find ourselves with the the crab problem that i had at least <laughs> before yeah i'm yeah. not sure i want to know no you want to know <laughs> this is uh and i i got that problem from martin you know <laughs> so this is just getting worse. <laughs> No, here's the thing. We have a guy. I love him. He's called Martin. He, ha- he usually played 
two or three big of those six-legged crab allied walkers. Mm. And uh, he was the one that gave me a, a Punisher phobia <laughs> or something <laughs> like that. Uh, because I could I could do nine points of damage on that frigging mm. Punisher. I never got to ten. Uh, <laughs> uh, I had some days when, when I made... 18 or 15 damage but he managed to repair in mm-hmm. between so uh and we don't want to get there that it you get that i loved in one aspect that you have an almost indestructible u- unit that's the big big threat i mean like mm. the Koenig's Luther or something uh, mm. i mean like something like that humongous thing but you have to be able to bring it down otherwise it just gets boring in the end mm. so i i think that the the uh the issue that could be felt here is not really with the heavy stuff, the heavy vehicles like the super heavy tanks or like the Beatles for the for the Allies or such. It's mainly, I would suspect, the the medium walkers that people feel just go down too quickly in some cases, uh, and especially like when you have things like zombie swarms or endac uh, African lions just rushing in and. Yeah, I, I can see why people can f- get that feeling, but again, is is it a problem? Is the problem here that uh, those units, the anti tank units, are too good, or that the medium walkers are too weak? Well, uh, th- that that is a very hard question. I'm sorry, I'm mm-hmm. jumping in there, Magnus, just a little bit, but because I, and it comes to the allies again the m4s uh, m3s i mean mm. i always call them the m4s because they're type 4 but they're m3s uh mm. sorry for that guys uh, and gals uh but you know most of those panzerfaust and rocket launchers and everything they do four or five damage mm. and the allied walkers take six mm. so um and i'm seeing more and more frustration on my opponents when i play allies because they don't wipe my walkers they don't get them out mm. uh because they miss a little bit and they don't have the full strength of squ- squad or, or something like that so i actually think there's even more possibilities for the allied and the, those medium walkers to come back into the game because people have forgotten mm. Be- beforehand there were only certain types of weapons you had for the tanks and those wiped the m3s the ludwigs lothars and stuff like that but nowadays, people have started to rebuild their armies so they have weapons that don't necessarily kill them outright. So I think mm. with mechanics, m- m- yeah. mercenaries and stuff... Um, uh, for for the most part, I think the math between how much damage a vehicle has compared to how much damage a weapon does, I think that is very well done. I think it's, it's super good, usually. Again, I think the problem is a slight tweak of points cost. And I've said this since uh, almost the beginning, <laughs> for example, with the African Lions. Yeah, I the, think they are the prime five example. points is too cheap for them. If they mm. were six or maybe seven, mm. it would be a very different story. Yeah. And if we do these small tweaks here and there, things will get very different. Mm. Uh, and I also wanted to add that the, the fact that a lot of vehicles goes down easy, fairly easy, is one of the first things that new players notice. They usually put their big vehicle, like, uh, I don't know, t- armor 4 or 5 vehicle, and they mm. think that it's indestructible. Yeah. They, they play it very aggressively and it goes down just like that. Mm-hmm. And they get surprised. Or, or the other way around, people say, oh, I only have my small infantry unit here. What can they do? And then mm. they realize, oh, crap, I, I completely obliterated that tank. Yeah. So it, it, you have to go into the game like knowing how mm. it works or, or it will screw you over, basically. Yeah, that, that is true. And uh, it's, like, uh, it's like Essa said, that... In real armies, of course, you don't send in just a bunch of tanks. You have to send in infantry to protect the tanks from infantry. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's so true. Uh, but but also, I like to just <laughs> to, to, to hook on to what you said. In there. With, even with the African lions, I, I do agree. They are 
they are so cheap that if I had a bunch of them, I would always play them, of mm. course, but I, I've never bought them, so or I bought one and then I mm. sold them to someone else who wanted them because I didn't want to play Endac. Um, mm. That's another story. Uh, but you could also... We also have that little, and I don't mean to be rude now, Leah. I know us that you are not liking this, what I'm going to say, but uh, bear with me anyway. What you could also do is, of course, go back in time and change it to that the Af African Lions and stuff like those only can fire either the rocket launcher or the machine guns, because then they will have that. That would people will hesitate more now they mm -hmm. know they just run their african lions straight into anything and whatever they face they shoot but it, i think at least that that would but and of course mm. six points six points and uh mm. and yeah but that's, uh, that's actually a good point mm -hmm. with the how it used to be in the previous edition of the game where heroes and vehicles could fire all of their weapons any other unit? Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, vehicles and aircraft. But I mean, yeah. uh, all, all the, the normal infantry squads, each model had to choose just one weapon to fire. Yeah. Uh, and that's, I, I think that would be a good idea. That would mm. kind of solve a lot of the problems, actually. I'm, I'm just wondering here if it's the same kind of problem that that was a rule that maybe got people confused and that's why it was changed. I think so. I yeah. think so too, unfortunately. Yeah. And uh, so I, I don't blame Olivier at all on mm. that. I believe I, I blame the community. <laughs> so, sorry, <laughs> that's just... Uh, and I, mm. in all fairness and all, yeah. and all love and <clears throat> respect, I, yeah. it's, the, it's the community's fault that this rule is... Uh, <laughs> And but it, but in a way, in that him, case, in that case, yeah. I would prefer uh, a points change yeah. rather yeah. than a rules yeah. change yeah. at this point. Yeah, because you don't want to alienate too many of the players, of yes. course. And this, it's the same line as I said: when don't change the damage resilience anymore, just have it this way. Don't change the Teslas anymore, have it that way. Mm. Even though I believe it's overall mm -hmm. on a, on a subsection it makes the game worse mm. in the larger scale it's getting better because more people enjoy it yeah. and it's better for me that more people enjoy it than i get my will mm. here <laughs> hear it hear it hear it wow. <laughs> oh, yeah that was awfully humble of yeah, you. I, no, I, I will never say that again i'm sorry i'm ashamed of myself <laughs> Yeah, but I think uh, like the rule of thumb should almost always be to, to try to keep it as simple as you can, not mm. make it mm. unnecessary, like convoluted with mm -hmm. with stuff. Yeah. So usually it just means, yeah, tweaking the points or yeah, you, you don't really have to fix something if it's not that broken. If oh. it's yeah. if it works, if it keeps the flow of the game, if, if yeah. Don't don't change what you don't need to change. The best mm. British, um, oh, what do you call it? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just losing it. Proverb. Proverb, yeah, the best British proverb. Uh, if it ain't broken, don't fix it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so true. So mm. um, absolutely. Right. Our next question comes from David Nighthawk. How do you feel about the current standing of Allied Rangers? I think this one is uh, typically for uh, for you, Luda. Yeah, but Magnus also plays them a lot. So, yeah. so uh, please jump in here. Uh, I the thing is, yeah, they when you play them, they feel that they're lacking, and they do have. Um, it's 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 the units you choose when you want to. Uh, test yourself to to uh, um, really go up against it. Hard uh, mode. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, not really, but I understand you're you kind of uh, there because they they have this kind of stigma at this time of being uh, underperforming. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It's uh, for me. I mean, they feel kind of like vanilla, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, and but, but of course, we've been playing the game for a long time. You two even yeah, longer, sure. and they've been there since the start. Yeah, sure. sure they, they are old I, units. So uh, I like the Rangers. I like the play style, or at least the way I play them. Obviously, uh, I play them <laughs> a fair bit. Uh, for for me, I think it's sort of they lack those more kind of, how would you say like extreme kind of units mm -hmm. the, those really specialist unit that pack some real punch like mm -hmm. we mentioned the african lions before mm -hmm. um so they have a lot of 
interesting unit. They have a lot, sort of um, middle of the ground units. They aren't that bad. I would probably argue that a couple of them at least are uh, a little bit too expensive, but they have some some good units, mm -hmm. but they lack that, you know, that final punch. Mm -hmm. That that's what I usually feel when I play them. Mm -hmm. Uh, the game might go very well for me, and I keep pushing, but I, I fail to, to like deliver that finishing blow, if you know what I mean. Mm. They, they lack that final punch that you can just throw in and go for the knockout. They, they just don't do that. So, so more, more of a grindy type of army. <laughs> Yeah, and they don't have really any. They don't have any damage resilience or no. other like defensive tech, so they can't really last long enough to grind mm. down the, uh, the yeah, opponent yeah, that as is well. An so, point. yeah, well, they have the range usually yeah, when infantry versus infantry, but they have lesser bullets, so they really need to get the upper hand on shooting first, backing away, shooting again. And then they can square up, and then it gets interesting. And they, they have their bazookas, which is mm -hmm. also a very, very, very good anti-tank weapon. Definitely. Yeah, but the, the problem is that you, you, you don't get too many turns of doing that kind of... Um, um, it, it works yeah. against an army uh, that is equally matched in number of activations. But many lists nowadays in tournaments go for as many activations as they can, basically. Yeah. And, and, and that's a problem. And we've been into this uh, before, and it's, it also depends on if you play for time or if you play casually for turns. Yeah. Because if you get the turns, if you get eight turns, that's still a lot of turns for you to maneuver and be patient. Mm. If, you're, if you lose the t uh, game on turn two, if you're not on an objective... If you lose mm. the game after two hours when you played three turns, you're gonna n almost every time you lose with the allied rangers uh, type two because they need the time, mm. um, which is and why we don't think that the game is broken in one aspect because the game has never been played to be played for two hours, three turns or something like that. Mm. In 99% of uh, the cases, the scenarios are made for least six mostly eight turns and no time limit mm. and in those aspects they can grind it they can weather they can move they can use their abilities uh, but the current tournament setting it's yeah, not it, that it's both that that you might in a tournament setting you might not have time to do what you want to do and also there's a lot of other armies that are like faster movement wise mm. so they, they uh, at least that's how i feel that they sometimes have a problem to to respond quickly enough to that mm. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's of course also goes into the to the tor uh, tournament play that it, it kind of favors that because you have limited time so you need to to put some pressure on almost immediately and and they have difficulties in even if they uh, they weather that storm that first couple of, of turns they won't have enough time to to finish it yeah. off so and I, I and i don't think that um uh that's the way ollie and the studio wants to go with 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 the solving that because i don't think they want to really solve that in that way but what what could have been if if they were to release easier uh, in a sh cheaper point cost um commanders so you could perhaps hmm. try to gamble and stack a few commanders in a command vehicle so you get multitudes of i mean if you do the hq walker that's now a type 5 that lasts a little bit and you only can get that on the uh, field i have sometimes they doodle with a, a command squad and basoka joe mm -hmm. so you get the double activate reactivation mm -hmm. that's very potent but they are then 20 points if you yeah. could scale that down 20 points, perhaps three commanders in that uh, in that mix, and they can reactivate three. So they get back some of the speed of it. Mm -hmm. Then that could happen. But also, as we were into before, if they could get that, get that um, special box with the mortar, sniper, yeah. and uh, observers, so they can ease, more easily uh, do special things, and they need something more punchy one she like one squad with facers that can mm. and and be um, be their little um specialists that 
okay, we have problems over there. We need to send in the specialist and we our flame guys can't rush three because they're going to get shut out. Mm. So let's suppress them before and then kill them. Mm. Uh, something like that. And I think that could go very good way to make Allied fun again and then also make uh, um, uh, the studio get their revenue. Yeah. Mm, so. And uh, as a comment to this question uh, over mm. on Facebook, we had Maximilian Jackson, which, uh, by the way, I hope he goes by Max, because mm. Max Jackson is an awesome name. Mm. Uh, <laughs> he says, I dislike the platoon rule of scouts, felt it never really gave any advantage, particularly for larger maps. But you, you kind of mentioned this uh, in the uh, in the regular episode. Yeah, uh, I, I love that platoon. Uh, I must say, though, that I agree larger mats then mm. it kind of falls off yeah so on two mats i think the scout is super uh you can do so much cheap uh, cheeky stuff for the to the opponent uh and at least here in in uh, europe i feel people forget it or are nonchalant because they feel like oh they're just allied they don't do much and they put something a little bit too f- much forward so i can get at it mm. and i start picking off them but yeah the, the scout for a three mat game you need something more than the scouts it should like be for every mat you play before after the yeah. first two well, and i know this is a new rule and stuff like but then you should do be able to do scout one more turn or something like that uh, or, or th- yeah. there's something there that mm. doesn't so well, what you need to remember with this platoon this uh, specific platoon is that it it also gives you an advantage that you can't use because it's it's from the yeah, former yeah. edition yeah. and it's got a carryover and it it's it it mm. doesn't exist uh, what it says. So this platoon, sometime I really hope that uh, Olivier will come around to it and and, and p- release a new version of it, mm. like they did with the zombie platoon. Yeah, so. exactly. So so this one isn't really a good example right now here. I think I have the perfect one because oh. they already introduced it in Paradise Lost. There's the salvation. Give the allied players the Italian scout rule. I'm talking about the Rome. Yeah, yeah they yeah. are oh, they're yeah. starting yeah. at the table and then scouting. So basically they get oh, yeah. uh, like a double yeah. march move and then yeah. they can also shoot yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, especially cuz uh, that would that would be so interesting. Mm. Uh yeah, hidden deployment they are forward scouting. Uh, perhaps they should limit that not everyone can do it then, perhaps? Yes, yeah, um, just limit it to just uh, the, the specific units in one in the platoon, something like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, then I, because I, I, yeah, well, but still, yeah, it seems like they could have packed that mortar up mm. good. And yeah. carried it and but then it, run it, with may, it. Yeah, and make it, it a, so it's an, so, make, so instead of making it a, a scout platoon, it basically makes it an ambush platoon instead. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, That's a very interesting thought. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I I hope we will see a new version of this because the the one that exists now isn't really complete. So I don't think really you can com- compare that to other platoons because no, it's it's no. not. Uh, and, uh, so going back to, to the original question here, the current standing of the Allied Rangers, mm-hmm. uh, I think it's better now than it has been, mm-hmm. basically because of the release of the uh, heavy mm-hmm. mortar mm-hmm. there, yeah. and of course, like, uh, yeah. Rosie. Yeah. Because Ro- Rosie and her crew yeah. uh, is a super interesting and, and cool unit. And, and, and just do... just uh, the Soldier 2 version of Rosie, so you can use her to buff an existing Ranger uh, yeah. unit. Yeah, that wasn't true. possible before. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. yeah, that's and, true. And put one or two squads uh, of the mercenary girls. Do a little tweak then and say, okay, I'm not 100% allied Rangers, but put one of those girls in between your M3 walkers. Oh, because yeah. if they don't manage to kill them outright, those girls just fixing it up, and they can... It's, it can be a grind match. Mm. It, it, it could also wipe you out immediately. So so don't take it as a oh, well, a given. But, 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 but that mm-hmm. could shift the balance a bit. Yeah, yeah sure. Absolutely. Uh, next question comes from Oliver Galka. What infantry units should Blutkreutz get, in your opinion, and how would they work? They should get 
Cool units. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 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 I, I would say they already have cool units. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> More cool units. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Definitely. Um, d- it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to... I mean, we, we go with uh, with stuff that already exists in the game mostly. and just But, but if we try to come up with something new for the Blue Kreuz, we, we know they are getting that that big (laughs) Frankenstein yeah Yeah, the Frankenstein together huge monster guy Uh, but uh, if you just go for regular infantry units uh, well uh, I would say some kind of uh, if we haven't we haven't really seen plasma technology uh, in the game it's related to laser but I would think that if there was a place for that it should be in the Blutkreuz because those are the kind of high tech faction. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So uh, as an elite uh, unit of plasma wielding uh, infantry. Mm-hmm. I don't know exactly what that would do compared to laser, uh, but but the idea. Um, I don't I, know. I could definitely see more flavors of zombies and gorillas for sure. Yeah, sure. No problem. Make some new variation there. Uh, I would also like to see more infantry to lasers. Yeah. And I'm thinking, I'm comparing to the Endax, they have a bunch of different units. They have, a, I think it's called security unit or something mm-hmm. like that. And I could see, I could see a Blutkreuz unit uh, with like mm, laser pistols or at least smaller firearms and with some kind of either special weapon or special rule or... I don't know, maybe they have a camouflage or whatever. Yeah. You know, like some, they are these, I don't know, special police force or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but, military and then, police and I know, When you talk about the apes, I mean, some, uh, something that we have been discussing before and now especially that we are getting the scooters. Mm-hmm. I want to see the Axis motorcycles with the sidecar. So you have an, a regular Blutkreuz soldier driving the motorcycle, and you have one of the gorillas in the sidecar. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a hilarious. I yeah. would love it. Uh, I'm, of course, a little bit apey old school, so I would have loved to have uh, apes on horses, like in, uh, <laughs> uh, in uh, Planet of the Apes, of course. Oh. Yeah, you, you, you've seen it, guys. So <laughs> I'm heavily into it. But, but uh, spinning on that also, in the when they in the future in the newer movies had like spears and bows and mm-hmm, stuff like yeah. that, I I could see a unit that could shoot perhaps four uh, uh, and like one die each, but and then have like four close combat attacks on infantry or something mm. like that. Yeah, uh, so they were like some cross between the two current monkey units we mm. have, uh, because it would be nice to. Perhaps they are not then too much emphasizes on herding wa- beetle and walkers. They just have two dice, one on all walkers or something like that, but four dice in close combat, uh, four dice, one on each uh, infantry, and then they can also shoot at infantry with bows and arrows and stuff like that, perhaps three, four squares away, which will give them the dimension in between locking unit and spreading them. Um, for the zombies... I definitely want to have some quick, fast, easy to kill, dog like vampire zombie. I mean, like some skeleton, mm. almost dog like. I know Matt's did one, he copied some from the Elder of 40k and like zombie dogs or something like mm. that. It was super nice, uh, but something like so you can send them in advance. And so, so, kind of sc- Scouting unit or just a distraction unit, yeah, or because in a way. the zombies are so slow and can't be transported. So I, I feel like it, it would be totally logical that they would develop some sort of rabbit dog like thing that they, they send out to distract the enemy before the other ones come uh, yeah. afterwards. Uh, that is something that I definitely want to see. Um, could be cool, yeah. And I had one more little dingy wingy bingy about some units there as well with the more serious guys, but for some reason I'm starting to lose it now. So let's just uh, 
we'll save that for a rainy day. All so, right. Yeah. <laughs> Take a rain check on that. Yeah, then. I'll, I'll be and, back. And uh, our, our next question is, uh, is a really serious and important yeah. one, I feel. This yeah. comes from A.L. Voss. Will Bazooka Joe and Koshka ever find true love? And I just jump in right <laughs> and I just say that if this question would have been for the for the uh, for the 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 the, the uh, competition we had for the best question, I would have <laughs> voted for this so hard. Yeah, it's just, it's, uh, please, guys. Yeah. Who knows? Maybe <laughs> sometime in the future when the Vril arrives or yeah. the world unites or, or something. Either um, the world either unites or burns. Either way would probably work for them. Yeah. Or maybe they already found it. Yeah. Who knows? Mm. Who knows? Yes. Uh, but it also links into, well, um, into uh, Sigrid. Will mm-hmm. she ever get revenge yeah. on Joe for the death of her father? Mm-hmm. Uh, that's just so this triangle uh and i i it's it's fun in games right now but also it's it's actually it's kind of interesting uh you really w- want to find that out some, yeah. um i i wish we could have a, some um i wish there would be a new book someday and that they can be, explore a little bit more of those uh, hatred. I mean, those uh, storylines. Mm-hmm. I mean, we, yeah, well, we, uh, we have the role-playing game coming up. Uh, yeah, sure. true. Yeah. And in the meantime, I guess people out there can always write fanfics. I guess. Yeah, that would be nice. <laughs> uh, also, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm just, I'm just interested in what what could happens with the, and there could be nice, interesting stories when still when when uh, like in the comic when people try to rescue each other from the other ones and stuff like that so um yeah well uh, this is a very good eye of us you're you're a great guy yeah and uh, next question comes from frank washburn have you gotten sarnai and grom on the table how have they fared thoughts for building a list around them uh, this is another one for you i think loda because you are the big ssu player here mm-hmm. and i don't i don't own Sarnai and Grom, I don't think you do no, either, Magnus. No. <laughs> it's just me. Yeah. Uh, well, In the whole world. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no but it, and the thing is, I actually, since Sarnai is um, Chinese, I, I, did, I haven't played um, the combo that mm. I think I did it once or something like that. I usually want to put the Red Ace in the uh, Grom instead mm-hmm. than uh, if I do. Uh, but, hmm, and I, it's a love and hate kind of thing the Grom affair for me uh, I, I faced actually Sanar and Grom once in Lin uh, mm. but uh, yeah, mm, well it, that didn't end well for the guy I think I shot it down the first turn it, yeah. but when it came to close yeah, I had a bad army list for him uh, well the Grom is it's a lot of points yeah it's a lot of points in one basket especially yeah. if you combine them and uh it's you don't it's only six dice uh, and it's uh, yeah you should pay a fourth of your army without a pilot mm. to go places and deny some big thing to move mm. it is of course uh or restrict its movement it restricts its firing yeah. capacity i i it, it, it's a fun thing if you have a fun day but it's I, I, I just can't get my head around building an army around it, but because whatever I put together with it, it doesn't, it doesn't add up. It doesn't match up, unfortunately. But then, yeah, in a way, yeah. you, you you do say a quarter of your army points. Yeah, so that, for hundred. That. Yeah, so that kind of. Uh, it kind of just goes by the way that you use the hundred point army as the as the standard. Yeah. <clears throat> what say if you were building a hundred and fifty point army? Yeah. Uh, would you consider it then, and how would that fare? Then, then you get the other problem uh, that it's restricted with three choppers in a list. Yeah. Because uh, okay, what should I do then? Should I use the? I I experimented a little bit with having three choppers and a lot of the, um, uh, the transport vehicles, the PT uh, forty sevens. Uh, yeah. So uh, I and then because then they can follow suit and get to where the choppers are going. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, you get that 
I mean, stretched army, and that's mm -hmm. never good when your choppers go away. Okay, bye bye, choppers, mm -hmm. come back next week, and we stay over <laughs> here and fight in the meantime. I mean, that mm -hmm. gives you uh, that's not a bit, it's never a good thing. Um, and I remember <laughs> when these came out, and we talked about like theorizing before having played them, and I think if you have for example, if I'm playing an Axis army and I have a, like a, one of the Sturmkönig or Königslothar or whatever, I also definitely want a command team or an officer so I can reactivate that mm. big thing. But if you have Grom and Sarnai together, it's a lot of points. And on top of that, if you want one of the very few pieces that have the, uh, um, what's it called, air control? Mm -hmm. yep. It's even more points, and if you, as far as I know, those are also helicopters or yeah. in a helicopter, which yeah. also becomes one of your three helicopters basically. Yeah. So it's mm. you really you put so many eggs in that basket, yeah. so so it's going to be difficult to to get something else going really. Mm. Yeah, uh, and and if you could have three transport choppers and three attack choppers, uh, and one of them, those six choppers, you can change or have an extra. Uh, I mean, uh, command shoppers that could reactivate and stuff like that, then that could be an interesting army because then it would be so much points that you would not have too many units inside the transporters that they will... Of course, since you can shoot flamers, grenade launchers, and especially the, the frogs and the infantry squads out of the transport shoppers, you can still break the game mm -hmm. and you can... Uh, that army... But if... if if you only had the possibility to build uh, a, f a helicopter army that came in and had only infantry to be put down and then they could had to I mean, do their business on the ground, so to speak, yeah. then, then that would be a very interesting army. And then the Grom thing would be interesting because then it would be interesting to pacify things. Um, it's just this mix when you have the restriction of three you want you do the you do opt unfortunately because you do two transport shoppers and they have a bunch of nasty things inside them mm. because they are not quick to be put down and they do all the damage in the meantime so so, so um, yeah so we are obviously we are talking like mm. tournament arms yeah. yeah tournament list with those restrictions and, and in that case as i see it, it it seems to be a very difficult thing to do to use these like effectively and 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 really make it work but if you don't play a tournament if you play just casually and don't have those mm. restrictions and if you play bigger games let's say 200 points or something yeah. then mm. it, it it becomes a completely different story i think yeah, and then then I would love to have uh, yeah. Grom and being flying side by side with the Red mm -hmm. Ace, and then you can have the Red Ace special chopper as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but otherwise, I mean, four Tesla batteries for three times twenty, three, uh, four times eight points, thirty-two points is exactly the same as the Saturn I and Grom, I think. And those, if, if I'm facing a mythos, two mythos monsters, what do I want? four possibilities to stop them to not get at me mm -hmm. or one chopper which they can attack as well yeah. so i mean i come there with my 24 points uh, 32 points in the chopper and that little tentacle thing uh, with wings goes from and goes like <laughs> and i'm <laughs> oh yeah fun game mm -hmm. uh so there um, it, it, but also i like to say surprisingly when i played it it's always been the Grom that's been left standing for some reason. Oh. <laughs> uh, when I played three choppers with Grom, one of them, the other choppers go for, uh, before for some reason. Uh, and I love to do the striker one version so people understand that because I want more weapon lines. So mm. I do two strikers and a Grom uh, or two strikers and uh, the Red Ace chopper when I do it. Yeah. And, um, so 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 you can do it. You can have fun with it, and it has surprised a little bit. Just like not as much as the, the KV forty seven, the uh, KV three Tesla, the Type forty seven, the, the, yes, yeah. the KV three Tesla Walker. That Tesla Walker is more has been more of a usage to me. Mm. Perhaps because I can hide it more and I can do more, mm. even more stuff with it. Even though that sounds 
opposite. To yeah. it should be, uh, chopper should be better. But but yeah. I think it's the expectation of of the opponent in that case because mm. they expect the chopper to perform better. Mm. They don't expect the walker mm. to perform as well, and then you can surprise them mm. <laughs> basically. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. So a long, tedious answer. Uh, <laughs> I, I could have been better. I'm sorry, Frank, but uh, we tried. We tried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. From one Washburn to the next. Next <laughs> up, we have uh, Arthur Washburn asks, "What do you think about the reactive command? Reactivate command. Get moving, you bunch of monkeys." Uh, I would say that it is a just uh, an essential part of the game now. I mean, you you almost have to have it uh, in order to make the game feel like dust. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. I feel it's. <laughs> I, I'm yellow. I'm 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 bent and I'm yellow for it. You know. <laughs> now, uh, I I don't know what to say. I, I I still haven't played the monkeys so much. I've dipped my little mm. monkey toes now and then <laughs> when people haven't been watching into the, the bathtub, so to speak. But uh, uh. I see. No, I. I don't know why he's. Uh, what's the next question? Is, is yeah, like and a, I think his next question is: In general, do you think command squads are worthwhile point-wise, uh, with some sort of added dice help? Except, uh, for example, command vehicles or heroes. So, uh, I, is it worth? Basically, is it? Do you think it's worth it to put the command squads in command vehicles or put them with heroes I'm that not, make them better? I'm not like sure. Generals? I mm -hmm. kind of get the feeling that Arthur thinks that. Command squads or officers are not worth it. I don't yeah. know if, if that's if what he feels he means. That, or, uh, or that he feels that. Uh, it, it, I do. I, I agree. I do get the feeling that the that the vanilla command squads are a little bit weak. Is that that's what uh, he's feeling there? Then uh, and that you have to if, put them and get them some sort of buff. If but that's then the point case, wise, hmm. I really don't think so. I think command squads are a staple. Uh, yeah. They are usually, in most armor armies, they are very good. Mm. Some armies, they are absolutely essential to yeah. make them work. And I also think the, the possibility to reactivate units, like the rules, how they are, are very good to the game because it makes it very interesting. It gives... You, you create very tense situations. Mm -hmm. Everything depends on that last uh, sort of radio communication, that last radio order. Will they manage to to do what you want them to do? Yes. So, so I, I think it's uh, I and, think it's super good. Uh, like like I said in in the main episode when we talked about the the new HQ boxes that they what they really do the command squads in my opinion is that they add tactical tactical choices to the yeah. game and not only do i reactivate that unit or that unit it's uh, do i use this command squad to do a reactivation command or do i use them to repair something do i use them to attack something do i i mean you have a very very lot of uh, different choices do i uh, use one of my actions to reload that unit and then use my second action to try to reactivate the same unit so they can take out that tank i mean those kind of gambles do turn out in the positive sometimes mm -hmm. but it would make the game a bit more boring a li little more poor if that option was not there i, w I would think yeah i agree yeah I, and i would like to say that it's situational and player wise also because we, we have seen players like, once again, if I just mention Martin, uh, he had a, a phenomenal thing that he could find two, three units that he knew worked wonders. And then he had two, three, I think it's the most, he had three HQs. Yeah. And he reactivated certain units that he liked to play with. And he played almost only with a handful of units. And he did that super well. So mm. he, he, he maximized that unit, bam, 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 Mm. over and over again uh, but then I've seen super many lists and I played that way also with success with no HQ mm -hmm. so I mean uh, because you get more points you get perhaps two squads or one and a half squad or something else for it uh, so and um I mean, depending on your opponents as well. I mean, just as you said, with should I do all this? Should when it comes to the command vehicle, this game, perhaps it's better for me to have the command vehicle by itself. Yeah. 
because otherwise I know they will attack it and my HQ. Mm. But when I use it separately, they don't realize the threat that both po po possess, mm. and I can actually exploit that with yeah. the. Yeah, the the second part of the question here: if they are, <laughs> if command scouts are worthwhile points wise. With some uh, some added help like a command vehicle, uh, that's for me. That's sort of situational. It's both that I don't own too many of those uh, command vehicles. I mean, there aren't too many of them in the games, and and, and I only I own a couple of them. Uh, and sometimes I use them, sometimes I don't, because it it really depends on the the rest of the army. Mm. If I think I really need it, how essential is that? Mm. Uh, reactivation. If I really, really depend on on a specific unit to do some work, then okay, maybe I need the command vehicle to get the rerolls and stuff. Yeah. Uh, but you will also tie up more points there, so can you afford that? And I would say, for the most part, I find that I do not use a command vehicle. That's how I roll. I would rather prefer basically to have a command unit and one officer hero, for example. Yeah, um, and and that's uh, you. You kind of said it because uh, back in version two, when the when we had the command vehicle for uh, for the Axis, that was mm. just super super cheap and oh, fitted right. an entire command unit plus an additional hero. I mean, uh, that was just too much. We saw yeah. that everywhere. Everyone that could use that did, and. Uh, then the the now the pendulum might have swung a little bit more to the other side, but now it's pretty good. I mm. mean, uh, the best command u vehicle in the game at the moment that we see the most of, I think, actually, uh, is the PT forty seven one, uh, just because it's points efficient. It is, and it's a very good command vehicle, um, especially since it's level three or class three. Mm. I would argue though that. The, um, That's the Scorpion truck. Yeah, the, well, that the, is true. The, the Allied truck, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah exactly. Be, be, no, the yeah, they, they are the same, but yeah. I would prefer it for actually for the, yeah, the Allies than truck. for the yeah. command truck. For the yeah. Allies mm. is better for the Allied because they get they have a more tendency of needing the anti-air mm. option which that has. Yeah. That's why also I feel it's so good for the Allied that I can actually just bring it even if I almost don't have a command. Uh, uh, unit because it can hunt choppers and planes in a mm. quite good way for only eight points and also a lot of machine guns to kill infantry. Um, so so uh, the PT-47 is seriously good, but in that aspect, I really feel that they are very different, the Allied and the PT-47, but they are actually matched on usability mm. and 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 quality those two uh, uh, i think the germans ones is actually lacking there because it's the type three with two squares i mean talking yeah. about the big one now mm -hmm. not the command wagon and that little no. puffy thing but but the uh, prince luther prince Luth, yes. that one because it's it, it it has its moments when it can block yeah. Uh, it can do a broadside and block a lot of spaces so people don't see through it mm -hmm. and you can hide behind it. But most of the times you don't want to do it because it's so fragile. So the, it's very and it's very mm. easy to find on the game board because you can't hide it that well. Yeah. It's yeah, I've actually played that one a bit. I think it was not last year, but 2018 probably. I think it was you and Milo that we went to Lin shopping at one time. I think I played that army back then, maybe in the early mm. months of last year. I can't remember now, but... Um, you can make it work. You have to understand that it's it's very fragile. But uh, I tended to play that one fairly aggressively and, mm. and really uh, kind of run in, like you say, and use it to block stuff and mm. use it to, to mess with the opponent. And, and I was just sure it's, it's probably going to die and uh, mm. bad stuff is going to happen to my command, uh, which were in the vehicle mm. for, for the most part. But as long as you, you take that calculated risks, yeah. you, you can use those vehicles in, in interesting ways. Mm. So true. And if I were playing Axis more, I would have bought f f uh, more of those type of walkers. Mm. I only have one Stummel and one other that I can either use as Prince Luther or 
um, Storm Prince. The Storm Prince, yeah. Mm. Um, and m- I many times wished I at least had a third. It's not like you need the more uh, carrying capacity because they have 12, both the yeah. uh, Prince and the, the... No, not the Prince, but the, um, the Stummel and the... Um, Storm Prince. Prince, yeah, those two, uh, so you can transport t- twenty four, yeah. and that's that's a big army coming yep. uh, walking your way. Uh, uh, but splitting the eggs, of course, because they are so fragile. Yeah. So you need to separate the infantry, and even more so, uh, the fact that when they come in pairs, I was able to borrow once at SS place, so I played with more. Then you get that very interesting. I, I talked about it less, uh, many times when you can do like a fleet of ships yeah. that sails up and do the broadside mm. and everyone is out of those and blah, 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 yeah. blah. and still you can also angle perhaps the fro- forward guns mm-hmm. you got the rear gun and they... because, because that is actually an interesting point uh, if you go by the rules uh, if you have one of a, a standard infantry unit in one of those. Uh, normally, only half of them can shoot out the side. Uh, but the rules actually say that the amount of figures that can shoot out the side are half the amount of spaces in the transport. So that means in a standard five unit, uh, even if you have a, a hero in it, a six unit uh, infantry squad, all of them can fire out the side. Uh, from a Stummel then, yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's even better, Johannes. Yeah. Thank you for clearing that one. I actually missed that one. I would have only fired with three. Hmm. Uh, this, and I have yeah, there a little... Was, mm-hmm. There's been some change in that consensus. So, uh, for, I mean, in the answers from Olivier. Mm-hmm. He clarified this, I remember, yeah. uh, at, so, at some point. So, yes, that's how mm-hmm. it worked now. But but it makes sense. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you have yeah. almost two squares of... Yeah. You, I mean, I can have... Some of my units in here and some of them in here, and they can still jump out that way or that way or yeah. that anyway, because you are allowed that. So mm-hmm. it's it's like a bunker. It works like a bunker. You can yeah. from one space shoot a out bunker of bunker on legs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what the transport is. Yeah, they really want to cool. keep the infantry alive. Yeah. So, so. And then I, I will just do some quick words about the second half of this, and that is the heroes, and I think specifically the generals, because those are the ones that. Uh, work in tandem with command squads. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's kind of a big thing to go into. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I, I had this thought that we should actually do one of those uh, unit comparisons the, the head to head uh, and compare the different generals in the game mm-hmm. to each other mm-hmm. at some point. So I think we're going to get back to, to this discussion. And yeah. we, when they release the monkey general, <laughs> then, because <laughs> seriously, for, especially if, if they ever break free and you mm. get the option to play the monkey fraction, yeah. then you need that monkey general as well. And I have a lot of <laughs> names. Some, yeah, yeah. For, I have one suggestion for name. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> to just keep... Keep that simple as well. The question about heroes yeah. is that I think it depends on what your army looks like in general. Mm-hmm. There are pros and cons with it. Sometimes it's obvious that you want to join one of those generals with the with the unit, and sometimes maybe not. Maybe you don't yeah. even need the general guy. So and maybe you don't use it as a traditional command squad either. I mean that happened yeah, now in exactly. Linköping. So uh, Roger played his uh, ninjas uh, and uh, he used the the new general there with his command squad and they were basically a frontline assault unit yeah. for most of the time. So <laughs> yeah. So it it depends on on play style and situation and and what else you have in the army. Yeah. But as a whole, yeah command stuff and, and officers in specifically uh, very very much useful yeah. uh, next question comes from Gerald Winchek upcoming release schedule question mark <laughs> I don't know about this one <laughs> does it mean our release schedule well, or does uh, yeah. studio uh, release I, schedule or I, something I, else I, 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 I uh, <laughs> I can't find the words now. I'm starting to get tired. I uh, I, I think I, first I just, of all, I sp- I, first of all, I think we should clarify because we do get them. I'm not sure if this is what Gerald means, and I don't think so. Maybe, but uh, we do get a kind of confusion that we are affiliated or like paid or something by Dust Studio. We are not. We are just fans. Mm. We don't know much more than you do, honestly. <laughs> 
<laughs> so what we know about the upcoming release schedule is basically the same as everyone else. Yeah, sometimes so. we go to uh, events and we yeah. see those presentations or even talk directly to uh, Paolo or Olivier. Maybe we get some kind of special information mm. occasionally. But yeah, like you say, normally we just read what's written on the internet yeah. and that's it. So... Yeah, and I just wanted to be uh, obnoxious and say, <laughs> since we ate one and a half hour ago, I would say approximately in one and a half, <laughs> two hours, I will have a release schedule for you, but uh, it won't be pretty. <laughs> but, so, I think sorry. we should uh, yeah. move on here. <laughs> yeah, please, we, yeah. we have a couple of questions from Adam Shagan. First off, which cool accessories like acrylic tokens, dice trays and such coming out? What other uh, with cool accessories is... Mm. <laughs> okay, what... Well, Let's start that from top. <laughs> With cool accessories like the acrylic tokens, dice trays and such coming out, what other add-ons would you like to see for the game? Well... <laughs> the first thing that comes to mind is, of course, I w hope they will do some sort of uh, um, bit bag, as I talked about before. Oh, yeah. uh, destroyed walkers they couldn't sell. Uh, send them, make us buy them to make rec markers. So three yeah. D rec markers with bad stuff that just went crazy in the in the molds or something like that. Um, I don't know if you could would consider this as uh, accessory, the one I'm, I'm thinking of. Mm -hmm. But um, I remember if it was first or second edition of the game. Um, they had rules for barbed wire and minefields and yeah. stuff like that, which is. It's not exactly terrain, but it's sort of, but mm. you can also interact with it in different ways. And I kind of miss that. Mm. Uh, I would like some more of that sm like small, mm. small terrain stuff that you could add or yeah, sure. have in specific scenarios. And I, I have a, a specific thing which uh, surprised that they haven't done already, but maybe but they just wanted to see how well Paradise Lost did before. And that's neoprene versions of the maps that come with Paradise Lost. Yeah, yeah, we need definitely. that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And also more variations. I mean, we had those uh, back in Babylon days. We had the train station ones. Uh, but I'm, sh I'm not sure that those maps were as popular uh, back then. I mean, we had the whole Kickstarter mm. shenanigans going on then as well. So that mm. might be soured things. Uh, but more uh, of those mats and more different types of patterns so you can combine them and make interesting stuff. That would be cool. Mm -hmm. And even if you could do like smaller versions, like most, almost like the building tiles that come with the starter kits, but with different types of blocks, like uh, like a, a small lake or oasis for the for the uh, mm -hmm. desert tiles, or something to kind of augment those uh, existing mats. That would be interesting, I think. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Uh, what you guys didn't notice, I guess, but I think those <laughs> watching the video was when you were talking and looking into your eyes uh, there, it was having that romantic little thing <laughs> just a few minutes ago. I was grabbing my hair and almost screaming because I all of a sudden remembered what I needed for new units for Blodkreutz. Oh! Uh, so I, and, and it's so good. It's so fucking wonderful. <laughs> so, uh, Paolo, all of you, sit down. Pen and paper, you take down the note, <laughs> note of this. We need a mortar squad, but not a mortar squad. <laughs> we need a mortar squad that shoots some sort of EMP or some uh, magnetic pulse. Oh, the EMP. Yeah, oh. that's, uh, it's like Tesla, hmm. but it's different. So it's like uh, shooting, not smoke, but they shoot something that interferes. Uh, I don't want to put down all the text here so it, it, I don't know how it will interfere or if it's uh, they could perhaps also shoot some sort of spawn thingy zombie virusy or something but a mortar squad that does not <laughs> fire smoke no, but, but <laughs> no. they, they can be like uh, viruses or something yeah I know yeah. I don't, we, we've talked about this they want to we want them to be able to drop uh, zombies in a, in, yeah. in a freight container down in the ground and then you roll for mm. how many survived because those spills out mm. it's a wonderful thing but no as we were into technology and stuff like that they will fire some sort of burst that will land and have some sort of attack that perhaps can freeze something uh, or can uh, well yeah 
or disrupt communication or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, they, mm -hmm. there is the jammer rule. So why yeah. not shoot, put out the token and everything within X distance? Yeah, radio signals can't transmit between it. So if yeah. I put my token between the, his command squad and the unit that he wants to reactivate, he can't do that because he the line of sight or the communication line of sight is blocked. <laughs> That's just... Something like that, mm. a special one. Sorry, sorry, I had to say it. Right. Thank you for listening. <laughs> cool idea. Yeah. Uh, next question from Adam. What are you hoping the special Mythos flyer will be? I know that I've mentioned before what I would want to see. I would want to see like one of those uh, crazy cultists with the dynamites in a bi in like a biplane, <laughs> just with yeah. dynamite and everything, just going crazy out the windows. That yeah, I would love that. <laughs> Yeah, why not an air balloon for the mythos or uh, <laughs> something other really crazy stuff? I mean, uh, Da Vinci... We, 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 uh, yeah, and we, we have that uh, upcoming guy on the flying carpet. We know mm -hmm. that's coming up. Mm -hmm. uh, if we do some, something else, we can have some sort of uh, uh, air chariots uh, carried by uh, those Migos, maybe. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of stuff you could do. Yeah, and I don't want I don't want to copycat the 4K, but but the um, the, the hell drakes they got there, something like that. Of course, like a like a bird. There must be some mm. mythos creatures that fly. Yeah, sure. I mean, so some sort of bigger flying that spits something, or I don't know. Is it the bird? Is it the plane? <laughs> no, it's Johannes. Bicycle no. repairman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right, uh, next question from Adam. Have you tried the vodka or pizza missions with either vodka or pizza? <laughs> we, I don't think we have tried those scenarios yeah, in I skipped the first the place. Scenarios so. and went straight for the vodka and pizza. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we did it the other way around. Yeah, basically. Uh, yeah, more or less. Uh, I, I can I can do a spoiler from the for the uh, for the German yeah. uh, episode coming up. Marek plays his Marek platoon with the Marek rule. So, and everyone who's in favor of him can take part. So, when at least, so, so when he's doing the vodka, he's doing the vodka. Yeah. And I was impressed by the amount of vodka that came. <laughs> and you can always just go, oh, Marek, I think I'm thirsty. And he was, of course, Chevalier. So he was giving. <laughs> Oh yeah, mm -hmm. at some point we should, uh, may maybe with the pizza at least, we'll see if we can get with the vodka as well, but yeah, it it's an interesting idea. And mm -hmm. the final question from Adam, uh, transport, PT-47s versus copters, discuss. <laughs> Well, PT-47s, you can have more, so in that case they are better, but of course the choppers, is, uh, they are just um, a little bit better, unfortunately, but yeah. they're not fun. They're, not yeah, fun. exactly. The, the choppers are seen by some players as overpowered. Uh, that is that is a quest, That is a, something that you have to deal with, and the, I think the, if the big disadvantage that the choppers have is that they will be targeted immediately. Mm -hmm. Everyone is going to go after them the first thing they do. With the PT-47s, you have the option to sneak around a bit mm -hmm. and hide your troops before they get into mm -hmm. place. So I think that is something that speaks uh, in their favor. Yeah, it, it just, um, unfortunately, perhaps most to the meta, I, I, I feel it's so much more fun to play. Uh, I only have... Mm -hmm. uh, for PT forty sevens, that's also because I'm. There's soon some more PT forty seven chassis coming out, and I, mm. I, it would be fin. I am waiting to fill up with some of those. It's it gets a, to a big army otherwise anyway. I mean, yeah. um, but I could easily have had four more. Mm. I think the looks of the PT forty sevens is very cool. I like how they look. I would prefer if they were just a little bit bigger. The models, yeah. Mm. Uh, maybe I mean maybe they are. I suppose they are correct scale wise. Yeah. It's just like for me personally, it would be cooler if they were just slightly bigger. Mm. But the sculpts are awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Gameplays wise, um, I mean obviously I haven't. I've never played with PT forty sevens. I've just faced them. And if I had a choice, what do I want to face? I would prefer to face PT forty sevens because the copters are harder, basically to play against. Mm. Meaning, yeah, they are better. Uh, gameplay wise mm -hmm. I would say that's, that's just how it is yeah, yeah. Uh, the thing is when you, you, you 
with, since you have, can have, if you only had to choose between the either and either, and you still have the rules for only three choppers, you would of course do, uh, and you want to have a big movable army, uh, then the PT-47 uh, wins it, because you can do, you can threaten on many more places, because you can have more of mm -hmm. them, so, so uh, but um, it's of course much harder to bring down a chopper, mm -hmm. which makes it even more fun that one of the really nice things with the PT-47s is that they are quite good at bringing down choppers since they are very good at anti-air. Uh, I would not bring an airplane to a fight with a bunch of PT-47s. Mm -hmm. A normal airplane goes down mm -hmm. if you have a platoon mm -hmm. of PT-47s. Um, and, um, well, it's, I do remember, like, uh, in the summer when I had Koshka in one of my PT-47s and hunted uh, choppers with it, uh, and it actually didn't do that bad. Yeah. Uh, it actually really frustrated that poor guy who I was playing in, in that scenario because he was like, that's nothing, but still it kicked a little bit and then you got that re-roll or the extra actions and stuff like yeah. that. So mm, it's I, I kind of just, just got a, a kind of an idea that I'm not sure is a good one, but <laughs> I was thinking maybe to extend like the fog of war rule for passengers inside transports because the enemy can't really see what's inside there until they actually fire or get out well i uh, yeah um that's true that's true um you could actually argue that if i have four infantry units i put a note on which is mm. in which and then uh, Sometimes, uh, w if you play certain opponents, they don't remember either. No. So, <laughs> uh, but but I promise you, I have the cards here that I've matched them. Mm. This, that is that one. So I mm -hmm. I actually usually put a number on them as well. Yeah. So but but or a dice that numbers. So yeah. uh, it will yeah. be interesting to try sometime at least. I think. <laughs> Next up, we got Phil Marmaduke. Uh, is the airborne rule balanced? Ooh, that's a very good question. Yeah, um, and uh, actually, maybe not. It might be a little bit too powerful at at, mom at the moment. But, uh, well, I would say no then, but then no. perhaps it's just... Uh, <laughs> just to be contrary? No, no, but it depends, of course. Uh, the Allied uh, Airborns, mm -hmm. I feel, die too quick. So they 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 don't. That's why also people don't play them too <clears throat> much. Yeah. Also because I don't think too many have that many units, so they mm. can get the really yeah. punch in. But we, uh, we I know that we uh, had this question or a similar question uh, back when we had the Q and A session with Paolo mm. and Olivia, and uh, Olivia then said that this is something that they are looking at. That at the moment you have a sixty six percent chance to succeed with the airborne uh, role. And maybe in a future version of the game, this will be reduced to a uh, 50% 50, 50 chance or something like that. That's, um, uh, I could see change the rule from just rolling one die mm -hmm. to instead rolling two dice, but you need at least one faction symbol, which mm -hmm. means you will have a 55% chance yeah, instead. Yeah, exactly. It's a slight, slight tweak, basically. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, that... I think would be a very good change f overall. Um, but I don't know. At the same time, it's so uh, s since since it's a die roll, you can't really depend on it. No, you of can't course not. Calculate exactly. So, mm. so it's also a gamble. Um, so I don't know. It's uh, yeah, and to me, it's I feel. Realistically, mm. I feel that would be better, but I would feel it would be anti-dusty, so to speak, because uh, mm. they're always talking about that they want this our dust games to be the end of the battle, the pivotal, when you throw everything, when mm. you just go straight. And if you use parachute in that sentence, to me, they should be landing in your face and just doing some crazy mm. suicidal thing. I would... If I were a general in normal instances, <laughs> not that that would have happened, but then I would probably try to, yeah, uh, make them land in a safe place and then mm -hmm. advance to go. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And no one, that's not how we play them in dust. Now they oh, no. go boom and they're like, ah. So, uh, <laughs> 
And if you do that, reduce it for the possibility of success, then you will have to be more cautious. Mm. Uh, so... I mean, it it would again, change it. So it's, uh, it's, for the most part, I think this, uh, this question comes from in regards to Luftwaffe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because that's the whole army can, can use airborne, yeah. Uh, yeah. more or less. There are other stuff that, that also can use the rule, but it's more specific to a few units, a specific platoon, only, only mm-hmm. those can do it. So maybe, again, it's as simple as tweaking a few points costs. If those Luftwaffe units were like one point more expensive... Mm-hmm then you would have like one unit less which will also impact you know your number of activations and what you can actually do i think it can be as easy as that to yeah. just tweak things slightly but i'll stick my chin out seriously when did you hear of someone b- winning with the luftwaffe army yeah two years ago of course i mean Piotr it, it has in... happened but not too much no. which is why i think it's not that it's not broken in any no. way I, mm. i've seen somebody i can't remember when now but somebody wrote that oh this is broken it's not fun to play against but mm. that that i think is really an outlier and probably mm. in that specific game the guy playing luftwaffe succeeded all his roles or something mm. And that can, of course, happen. So. Yeah, but I've also played the exact opposite. Like, nothing happens, and then I wipe him. Yeah. So that wasn't fun for the Luftwaffe player in that case. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it can go either way. So all in all, I think it is fairly balanced. Maybe it needs a slight tweak. Yeah. Maybe. The, the only one that wins nowadays with Luftwaffe, and that's because he wins with everything, is the Warsaw Master. And he dropped them when he won it in the back. Uh, on yeah. almost every game so I, 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 th- there's nothing wrong with the uh, airborne no. rule uh, sorry that's I'm a sorry. good point yeah. uh, next question from, from Phil yeah. should Dust move to an online points model for more competitive play uh, like X-Wing and uh, if, for people who don't uh, are, uh, are not aware of this uh, when the X-Wing miniatures game went to their version 2 uh, of the game system they removed all the point costs from the unit cards themselves and moved them to an online list so you have to look at that and the reason for that is that then the designers can update just the point costs uh, with regular intervals and uh, that is just to simply and quickly tweak points cost which is something that we talked a lot about this is something that we would like to be able to do but to make this big of a change to how dust works uh, when it comes to the units uh, the unit cards and that i don't think that that is a good idea for dust mm. because i don't think that dust primarily is a competitive tournament game no as as far as i know uh private press and war machine have also gone digital they uh, th- that's a little so. bit different because i uh. think they've gone completely digital they don't even have physical unit cards anymore from what no, i no, that, that understand might well be yeah. true but but the reasoning still i think is that uh, with digital you can do updates yeah. you can do them quickly you can do them whenever whenever you want and i mean in theory it's a good idea, of course, mm-hmm. giving the designers more opportunity and ability to change the game how and when they want, basically. In practice, however, I think it's a very different story. Mm. Because first of all, you have to actually make that system work. You have to have the resources and the work hours to make the digital platform work, to make that system work, to have that whole operation. And I don't think that Dust Studio is there yet. Mm. And even if you wanted to do that, I'm not sure it would be a good idea because, as you say, Dust is not supposed to be a competitive game like that. Mm. Uh, so, so, so going there would really change how the game is played, I would say, how, how the... I don't know how the community would look like. Mm. I feel uh, I don't. I don't think it's a good idea, actually. 
Now, I, and now that you two are finished, I'm going to pick a little bit of a fight here because, uh, no, we don't definitely want to go anywhere near the X-Wing game. It's a broken crap game, which just happens to be the ones that buy most cards and new, new units just wins it. Uh, yeah, there are skilled players in there, uh, but uh, come play a real game and we will knock the crap out of you. Uh, so basically, we are happy that Paolo can sell X-Wing miniatures for that game and get rich. Uh, trying or whatever you call that. <laughs> no, but I mean, uh, seriously. And also, that would leave the back door open for Ollie to stop caring because then he can just go, Oh, I'll do this. I can change it tomorrow. Uh, he does a super job at the moment. Uh, that would be. It would be disrespectful for him, to, for himself, or to him. Uh, everything. I just. No, no way near any digital crap yeah, and, and we are old men we want <laughs> we need to hold the cards we have eyesight problems <laughs> we need to look at the cards today because that is hard no sorry i'm yeah, sorry i'm just and, paraphrasing and there's him. also don't forget that there's sort of a danger that if you have a small vocal minority that yeah. really cries out about things yeah. uh, and, mm. and those numbers are really shown cards could be changed but they shouldn't be changed. Yeah. It, it's just, you know, small part of the community. Most people yeah. really don't shout that loud. They don't really let let their opinion be heard. Yeah, exactly. So, and that, that is something that uh, we have to, t to take in con into consideration as well, because uh, we are a small part of the community. Mm -hmm. We are only three people, but we have a voice that people listen to. At least we hope so. Uh, but what, what we do is not proposing that the studio must do this. We are expressing our opinions, and they are our opinions, not anyone else's. We don't represent anybody else but ourselves, us three. Mm -hmm. And I think that's an important thing to, uh, to remember also. Uh, definitely. Uh, just with one extra layer on top of that. In this question, we are right. Uh, so we don't have to discuss this shit. Uh, but no, seriously. Um, uh, I, I was, I'm getting so worked up on over this um, for some reason. Uh, okay, uh, so I will quickly add then that a game like we talked about X-Wing mm -hmm. and other big games like Magic the Gathering and stuff, they host so many tournaments yeah. where they keep... Uh, very, I would say, detailed data about stuff. Yeah. So they can make very informed decisions about small, small details. Dust isn't anywhere near that. No. And I don't think it needs, I don't even think it should be near that because it's a completely different like set of mind or mm. yeah it's it's completely different really. so it, it doesn't need to go there no and uh, we've already had some small almost scares because as perfect in all aspect that uh, us is there had been a few times when some people have shouted about a rule mm. and it unfortunately had been tweaked for instance if we talk about the tank uh, large vehicles hiding in one square having cover in both squares mm. that's just unfortunate that wrong persons were shouting about that because that has that is the only thing that at the moment has been downgrading the game so to speak uh so so we we, we want to stave off that process mm. uh let it take time. Mm. Yeah, people are critical and hysterical when a new unit comes out and looks overpowered. Give it time. I have been hysterical to new units, but give it time. Uh, there can be instances, and I give you credit for that, Magnus, when uh, someone has been spotting it immediately that the anti-infantry units for uh, the Steel Guards mm. can break the game. It was true. I didn't think it, but I wanted to have time, and I have succeed I've, mm. uh, I've given up on that and they are not they're not good they need to be revamped the, mm. yeah but uh, it's, it's still i uh, it's very important to be thoughtful and not just boom 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 pandles everywhere new yeah, rules every day the, no no i believe that if you start changing things too quickly mm. and 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 like on a regular basic more or less 
uh, it can also be more difficult for new players not to only, get into the game. And not only new players, but also veteran players who come back after a break. Yeah. Because then they have no idea what's changed. And their old army doesn't work anymore mm -hmm. because points have changed, the rules mm -hmm. have changed. and Yeah, at, at this point we see old Dust players that were playing like first edition, maybe second edition and they haven't played the game for several years, they come back and are slightly confused about, okay, w w what cards do I use, uh, mm -hmm. how does this work here, how do I build my army? And if you would increase changes even more, I mean, Dust has already had, <laughs> cut some, uh, got some flack for, for, you know, several editions and mm -hmm. the, the Warfare game and everything, people are confused, and if you start changing things even more, it's not going to be mm. better. No. No. no, I agree. Our next question comes from Graham Carlson. Do you foresee any block level units becoming factions in the future, like Heavy Rangers, Cultists, Ninjas, etc.? Well, we have heard some rumblings that there might be some possibilities there in the future. Uh, Paolo mentioned that they have some, like, a few years in the future, maybe the different type of mythos creatures break off into their own sub factions. Uh, maybe the cadets for the IJN yeah. break up into their own sub faction and such. Uh, heavy rangers? I don't think so. I think they're doing fine uh, in the rangers list. Yeah. But we, as we talked about before with the rangers, uh, they might need something a little mm -hmm. bit to just help them get their stuff together, basically. Yeah, and heavy rangers also, a new squad for them. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know actually what I want there, but I just feel like um, if they want to get them going again, I, I think would say may to, maybe uh, not even a new squad, but a new hero, maybe to just do something new for them mm -hmm. would be interesting to see. Yeah. Yeah, I have nothing to add really. Yeah. If the, I mean, if you would put the heavy rangers as a sub faction, that's a kind of big chunk from the block units in, mm -hmm. in the allies. So you would have to replace that with something. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, no, I think I think heavy rangers are fine as block units. Yeah, that's cool. But the other ones, I mean, the the, the new blocks, the the mythos and the IGN, I'm sure they will get sub factions in the future. Yeah, at some point. Yeah. Uh, next up, Mike Pierce asks: Are we ready for 125 or 150 to be the new standard for play? Tanks, 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 e tanks, everyone. <laughs> well, uh, I can't well, uh, agree I, with tanks I, anymore. I, 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 I do less, so that, uh... understand you read everyone. <laughs> it says anyone. And, oh, everyone. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so, uh, but uh, but yeah. Uh, to to answer his question, I say yes, definitely. Uh, we more or less have 120 points a standard yeah, so in Sweden I'm gonna now. I'm going to say no, because 125 mm. is not a good sum. You want 120, bing, 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 130, bing, bing. or whatever. Yeah. You, don't, you don't want it to end it with a 5. What, no, uh, I did some math about this, actually, and I think we talked about this uh, quite a few episodes ago. The optimal number, because of how the math uh, regarding the faction bonus works, the optimal amount of points should be divisible by 20. Yeah. So 100, 120, 140, 160 and so on. Mm -hmm. Because that makes uh, all of those fractions even numbers. Yeah. Uh, so you don't have to go yeah. rounding off but to any size. But that's I'm sure yeah. that's not what Mike's uh, No, of course. But, uh, now, but so. if the... Uh, if the standard is 100 points, then yeah, I think you should try and do 100. We, we do 120, like I said, here in Sweden, in mm. most of our tournaments. Yeah. And there has been some... Uh, I, I know that the studio themselves has asked that, yeah, they want the standard points cost to go up. So I think at one point or another, we are going to go up to 140 at least. Yeah, mm. maybe. Uh, the, the, I'm kind of hesitant about going too big because yeah. the games will take longer time. You, that you is need the point. more time, as we said before. Not only time, but you also need more space because a hundred and yeah. ha between 100 and 120, that's a pretty good spot to be with two mats, with a yeah, 9 so by 12. So thinking as an organizer, mm. it's, it's more complicated the bigger the games you have. Mm. And even if you have have you know game ads and terrain and all that stuff mm. simply time is a very important limit because it is. if you if you're playing 
100 point game or 120 point game and that's fine if you move upwards it's going to take longer time so you have to calculate that maybe maybe you will have less rounds which is suboptimal in many cases because you need a certain number of rounds in your tournament to to declare a winner basically yeah. so um there are some logistics that can can be troublesome mm. if you go too big so and you and i don't want this but another thing to fix it is of course you go to 140 play two mats which is no problem you decrease the terrain yeah uh unfortunately and that would be of course unfortunately good for the studio as well because they will mm. make more money mm. uh because less terrain more kill zones m people that your units die faster uh the games go faster everything is doable workable but the f problem with that is i would say still uh, if you don't use fog of war and then you if you do then you do increase this time immensely then you take away the fun unfortunately in the gaming so i i would recommend against it uh, i do feel that with a a reasonable amount of terrain you can play 140 on two mats it's not that bad depending the, the thing is though if you face a spam ssu or spam and army mm. i mean i can put is it like 25 units or something with my ssu yeah. on the, and that yeah. will take forever even if the, he shoots with grenade launchers mm. i mean with rocket launchers and um, mortars and stuff on me uh i would just keep on pushing them so um Mm. For, for me one of the reasons to go to a higher points value would be to be able to use those more expensive units mm -hmm. bigger tanks uh, uh, sarnai and grom or whatever and to be able to use those you know effectively or have fun with them make the army work i think you would need bigger boards like at least three mats mm -hmm. three or four mats uh, so I don't know. I don't really see a reason to just raise the points without just, raising the the surface area of yeah, the game as well. I mean, mm -hmm. just because? No. Why not? Will it be f more fun? No, not really. It'll be different, but it's that doesn't always mean it's going to be more fun. Yeah, and, so but we've experimented with this, and we talked about this before that uh, you should definitely try it and uh, not only increase the point totals decrease the point totals that's also an interesting thing because that makes for a very different game if you do yeah, go with like 60 points instead personally some of the most fun events that we have organized were the smaller ones i remember one in the beginning we did like i don't know 75 80 points mm. and uh, you organized your own was it 50 or 60 points yeah. and stuff like that mm. you know smaller skirmishes can be so much fun mm -hmm. so making it bigger doesn't making it doesn't mean it, it goes to being more fun. No, no. I, 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 not because I had that tournament, but we were playing 50 points on one mat. And yeah. I have not, re I did not see anyone complaining afterwards. I didn't see anyone who didn't have fun or at least as fun as they had usually. Mm -hmm. uh, you could cap the number of units though. Yeah. Uh, that you could do. So you can play 140, but you can't play more than 12 units. That would mean you have mm. to bring some of the heavy hitters. That would be a certain type of tournament as well. Because mm -hmm. uh, you know every army will have at least one or perhaps two heavy hitters to get up to that point. That would be very interesting um, to try, yeah. Yeah, no. that's an interesting uh -huh. uh, interesting but, way of doing it. Mm. So, But I, I do think that it's at least 120 is the point total nowadays mm. for the standards. And I would be surprised if we're not playing 140 in uh, no i'm i would not be surprised if marek is forced to play 133 or something in, in poland because there's some <laughs> something and it's not not you marek i know you're holding against the, the, so but uh, i i'm hoping for 140 or 120 in poland mm. uh but uh, uh, well not not a fiber in the end no. please <laughs> sorry yeah <laughs> Okay, next up, uh, David Nighthawk asks, what do you feel about the re-inclusion of equipment cards and modifications? And yeah, th this is something that's uh, come up on several occasions, uh, like, uh, for instance, the, uh, um, the Allied Walkers with the extra 
uh, amphibious mod, for example, and it looks like this might not happen now. <laughs> We will. We'll, we haven't heard anything about it for a long time, and I think it's because it's it's hard to make it work. Basically, I think the VK stash is is kind of this idea, it is. what what it turned out uh, to be. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and that's why I feel like this will. It's not dead yet, mm. and I feel a few people have been um, active in trying to get Oli to do it and uh, me as one but but uh, and that's of course good he yeah. doesn't panic he doesn't listen to the the, the warmongers over here <laughs> just shouting do this do that but uh, still just small easy way to make your army unique or your mm. own um, I would love to be able to pay some extra to have grenades for instance uh, on a squad uh, so mm. I can do that. Okay, these, uh, like, I mean, the old classic Chinese uh, who had the PPSH uh, rifles. Yeah. In, in the beginning, they had the grenades so they could throw mm -hmm. them and they are sculpted with grenades. Yeah. Why not be able to pay an extra or two extra points, whatever, to have them the one shot use? And if it's a card, if you take you... away the card, it's yeah. out. Uh, I've used it. I put it on my trash heap. Um Mm. One time uses can perhaps recoilless rifles, mm. put one on the vehicle. Yeah, I got one hit here, it's one extra point, mm. but uh, this makes me unique. I have one of those. Mm. Uh. But it, if they do something like that, mm. uh, I would hope that they do it in a very, very small scale so that mm. it's not like every unit has something special. I mean, it's like then it, we get to that in 40k, mm -hmm. you have. 10 different infantry units. They mm. all look exactly the same. Phys just physically, the actual physical models. Mm -hmm. But the in-game stats are completely different because they have bought different equipment. I mean, mm. we don't really want to get to that point, I feel. No. Mm. Well, well, it, you, it's important that you re reasonably easily see what's in front of you. Mm -hmm. What am I facing? Uh, but then... Uh, yeah, well, I still feel there must be room for small modifications. You can put a cap on that as well, of course. You can buy five inf uh, equipment cards for your yeah. army on 100 points or something yes. like that. Each. That's exactly what I was thinking mm -hmm. as well. And I remember um, in the Dust Warfare rules, there mm -hmm. yeah. you had the option yeah. of doing some upgrades. I can't yeah. remember now exactly how mm -hmm. the system worked. If it was just one or two or whatever mm. it was, but it was a pretty hard cap like on mm. what you could do. Yeah. But you did have some options. You could make one of your units being a veteran unit mm. with some, you know, they were slightly better, mm. but it cost you a few more extra points. Uh, or you can buy them some, some grenades or whatever it was. Uh, and I think that would be really cool to, to make some, uh, you know, like a little bit more customization mm. but like you said i would not want to see that uh, you, you had multiple options for every unit and and, yeah. and do whatever you want because th yeah. that would be or may maybe if you um, if you have that uh, cap you have one for each type of unit. So you could upgrade one infantry unit. You could upgrade one vehicle. You could upgrade one yeah, aircraft. Yeah, something like that. Because yeah. uh, you, you, if, if you could upgrade or change everything, like you said, you have 10 units and they are almost identical, mm. but you went in there and you bought a little bit of this for this unit mm. and you bought some other stuff for this unit. Mm. It just becomes, I don't know, too cluttered. Mm. Which is, to me, it feels like counterproductive in the way dust is. Dust is so streamlined, it's mm -hmm. so fast, so simple. So it, you can easily ruin that by just adding too much of that mm. cluttered thing. So it's a, it's a fine balance of, of how to do it. Mm -hmm. A little bit, that's awesome, I think. Too much? No, definitely not. Mm. Yeah, I agree totally. Because then also, if you can modify everything you have the possibility that someone finds the breaking point. Yeah. So they go, okay, I do just like this everywhere, and ha, 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 now I've broken the game, yeah. so to speak. But just that little touch to make it your own, that's always something that I'm, I'm so positive to. So, so I hope 
And that should be so easy. Uh, point caps and total cap. Mm. Maximum yeah. five cards for 100 points, and they should total maximum five points yeah. or something like that. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, yeah. Next up, uh, Michael Halcom Gustafsson, mm -hmm. <laughs> as we say in Sweden. Mm -hmm. How would you improve the Allied M3 walkers? Do they need improvement? <sighs> well, here's the thing. You get that feeling, and the vibe is that. But yeah, the, the general consensus mm. in the community seems to be that they are a bit lacking. Mm. Um, but, I, but I still feel it's only slight modifications. Mm. I mean... Um, I could say, personally, the, the one thing that I dislike about them, and this really is only one thing, mm. and that is that most of them only have one single die to roll mm. against other vehicles. Mm. I really don't like that mm, <laughs> for, for any for any weapons uh, unless it's like uh, an infantry with uh, with one of those recallless rifles that's mm. fine mm. that that feels right but for an anti tank to roll only one single die against another tank mm. that doesn't feel right to no, me uh, it's it's so true uh, you um uh, all, uh, e e they are very good at shooting infantry and airplanes and stuff like that because they have a multitude of machine guns mm -hmm. all, everywhere. Uh, and of course, they shouldn't be just like everything else. Um, I, I, I remember the picture that uh, Paolo showed on internet, on Facebook, uh, way back. Uh, not way back, but a few, it was a while ago. Uh, when he had a hot dog in the swamps of Louisiana, I think. Oh, yeah. And it had a recoilless rifle on it as well. And that made me just feel like, well, that might be the thing that will make mm. it get to its opponent because usually it gets shot out before it reaches the other side or mm. the opponent. But if it has the threat of one recoilless rifle, perhaps something doesn't dare go in front mm. of it and it can hit on range. It seems like it's small. It's a little, little things... Mm. And if we go back to the thing that we were talking about in the other show, so to speak, with the phaser, mm. uh, just tweaking, tweaking, tweaking a little bit, because if they could have that phaser um, strength or they can boost themselves a little bit, yeah, I just, I, I don't know, it, it just feels like it's, it's, it's very small, subtle mm. changes that needs to... Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I don't know, I, I don't think they need that much improvement mm. either. I think a few of them could do well from just being one point cheaper. Mm. Uh, the exception maybe is the Cobra that's probably at least two points. Yeah, uh, maybe even three. <laughs> yeah, something, something like that. Um, otherwise... I feel they they are fairly right. I understand what you're saying, but that's uh, about the the one die. But that's mm. I mean that's sort of accurate. The pounder has yeah. one big cannon, and yeah. then that's what it does. It's it, that's just how it is. What I, I, I think I understand. Uh, what I think from a many, flavor, just, yeah. What I think many people need to learn with them is to use their speed. Their speed is so underestimated, mm. and that is also why they cost what they cost mm. because they are fast very fast for for being walkers uh for anyone out there who only play allies try playing axis for a while <laughs> that, that's what i'm saying i'm not saying that axis is, is worse in any way i'm saying that it's a big difference going from mm -hmm. Three five movement to two four, and also going from turrets to no turrets. Exactly, that's the second part. Mm. Turrets are very good. Uh, sometimes you don't get to use them that much. It doesn't matter that mm. much. So I would say the speed is more important than yeah. the turret, but the turret definitely plays a part as well. I just like to do though, put some thought on that. When you said it only has one big cannon, it only rolls one die. Yeah, but the like for instance the uh, Ludwig, when it shoots on bigger targets, it only gets one dice, even that has two guns. Mm. To say so, you could give it two dice because the dice are not automatically the amount of bullets they shoot. It's two. So you mm. you could it could still yeah, have two it, dice. I feel uh, the same. It's an abstraction. So, yeah. Yeah. So so even though I do enjoy that it's just one die because it just has one barrel mm. uh 
and I would love to have like the Ludwig's uh, roll two dice one even on a type seven because they do try to hit with two mm. it would be more logical here even if it's yeah. not it's not logical on the game board mm. so to speak yeah uh, <laughs> so you can argue and, and the phaser I mean the, the cobra there for instance I mean it should be two dice because two dice three instead of one dice six yeah. for instance but they then they would revamp all the phaser weapons yeah, in the game I, mean, and they, they have I understand very, why they don't do it they have sort of iconic weapon lines that they okay, do this is the the phaser family of weapons and yeah. it works like this so you, you you really want i think it's a good idea to kind of keep it at least somewhat the same not change it completely mm. um so i i don't know i think again if you would tweak things and and make some of the uh, these walkers slightly cheaper it would in return mean that you will probably be able to afford like one more walker or at least one extra infantry unit to mm. to act as guards for them basically and then especially if you combine it with uh, with their platoon which is actually also an underestimated platoon i feel yeah, yeah. Uh, because the ability to li like we talked about with the with the command units to reactivate anything basically in your army is uh, a great tactical advantage yeah, i think i think people are looking at the m3 platoon in the wrong way i mean some platoons are uh, very how would you say prominent like mm. this is how you play this army yeah uh, the m3 is a sort of um, all comers platoon it it gives you so many options mm -hmm. You will probably play games where you don't have to use it, where you don't need to use it, where it doesn't really have an impact on the game, more or less. But sometimes it can have a dramatic impact mm -hmm. because it gives you the option of doing, you know, something out of the ordinary. Um, so, yeah, it, it depends on how you look at things, how you play things, and, uh, I don't know, learning to use those assets better. Yeah. I'm not saying that I'm very, you know, very good at playing these. Actually, yeah. um, I try to use at least at least one of the M3 walkers when I play. Uh, possibly two, three, depending. I, I've played the platoon as well with lots of them, but I, I usually don't play it because I prefer playing my my uh, converted infantry and stuff and mm. head swapped. I like those models. So, um, but it took me quite a while. To learn, since I come from an Axis, playing Axis background basically, it, it took me a long time to learn how to use the speed of the walkers. That's mm -hmm. why I, I really wanted to point that out. Uh, and I think it's underappreciated how fast they are, what mm -hmm. they can do. So use that to your advantage. Uh, try to maybe lure your opponent in one direction and then you make... Uh, quick side uh, sidestep to the other direction. I mean, mm. a, a march move from one of these walkers is uh, is I mean five squares is is a long way basically. Yeah. And if you're playing the platoon and you can reactivate and going five more, you can really change where the battle takes place. Yeah. So, yeah, I would say the sweet spot for me at the moment is hundred points four walkers. They did you don't get the big walkers then mm -hmm. you get one that is a little bit offensive or threatening or mm -hmm. you get you have to have the smaller ones but i think if you can manage to get an army to that works with four it's enough armor to make it hard for the opponents especially for 100 points mm -hmm. to tear down four walkers without yeah. them having some impact they are uh, of course exceptions to that but but um um that is, and, and on the M4, M3s, I mean, I, I think I'm more with you there, Magnus, that a slight point reduction perhaps then. Um, because the platoon, that platoon is a good platoon. Um, and I don't see it as simple as the scout platoon for the Rangers uh, that you should you do anything more with the. Mm. Um, what, what I have been thinking though is. Uh, if they're going to do one more walker, I know that they have so many choose to choose from from the M series. Yeah. So I understand that they don't want to put any, um, uh, any any energy on that because they 
feel like they had enough. But perhaps one that could transport units mm. for some reason in some way. That would have been a great thing uh, because mm. the Allied Rangers could also do with that if they could like, hop on mm. to one of the walkers and get some. They can get cover from behind, uh, mm. running beside behind them, but the Allies don't have any good transport vehicle. If they don't have the jeeps, they can have, the, of course, the transport mm. trucks then. But having the steel of a walker mm. that only perhaps only have one or two machine guns, small machine guns, like the recon, uh, but not a recon mm. or just a transport walker. Mm -hmm. I think that could be interesting. Interesting, yeah. um, interesting thought, yeah. yeah. Final question for the day then. David Shepard asks, will we see an expansion of stores selling Dust 1947? Absolutely. I mean, we don't have any <laughs> any kind of insight or uh, things in there uh, in that. But uh, I mean, we are already seeing an expansion of stores. I mean, they're popping up all over the place. Oh. Uh, of course, it's uh, it's slow going <laughs> still. But uh, I would say if you want to see uh, a store in your area, pick the game up. Go and talk to them. Uh, play some games with friends in the store. Let them know that there are people there playing. And uh, there is uh, an audience, a buying audience out there for it. Yeah, stores, um, I mean, they are commercial businesses. They want to make money. Yeah. And if there's an interest, uh, they will, of course, look at the products. It's, it's as easy as that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I know that since, I mean, after the, uh, the Kickstarter problems, uh, a lot of stores said they will not... Uh, do business uh, will not sell dust anymore mm. but that's several years in the past now yeah and a lot uh, of stuff have happened since then and uh, we are obviously seeing more and more stores picking up dust yeah either picking up picking it up again or i mean new stores new stores uh, stores open and close all the time so um yeah, definitely. As the game grows, the number of stores will also continue to grow. Yeah, and uh, it's it feeds itself. So the more people who are actively playing, the more interest the stores will have in selling. So uh, go out there, play games, demo the game for people who don't play it yet. And just spread the world, uh, evangelize, <laughs> basically. <laughs> That's how we do it. Yeah, uh, well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's it. That was a that was big a mailbag. big big yeah. mailbag today. So I think uh, yeah. let us let us know uh, how you like this format that we split it up this way. And of course, remember if you have any questions that you want us to to tackle, then you can send them to us on at uh, dustwarjournals at gmail .com or just uh, check out our Facebook page. We usually ask for questions. Uh, like the day before we record usually. Uh, and with that said, uh, a very big thank you for sticking with us for this uh, mailbag special. Uh, this is Jonas. Well, yeah, and uh, before, unfortunately, yeah. you were running, oh, yeah. running, running <laughs> your mouth just... for once uh, a little bit there. So, yeah, I, so I'd just like to jump in. You said it a lot of times that we are fans, we are uh, as our own entity and stuff like that. And um, since I stick by my words, I don't have a problem with picking fights with people. <laughs> and this is a lot of course. Uh, so, uh, but I just like to emphasize that um, when you do this wonderful thing that you send us a, almost a Father Christmas bag full of goodies, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to treat them like you want our opinion. Yeah. Otherwise, you have to uh, answer, write something like, Luda, don't answer that question because I don't want to hear you. Mm -hmm. And that's fine. Uh, totally fine. I don't take disrespect for that. But I'm going to give you my opinion. And so hopefully you can take it. I can take your opinions. And I'm going to be frank with you. And I don't shy away that I don't feel some things are stupid, some things are good. And that's the way I am. So I just like to add that from my personal uh, perspective because I was a little bit more on the offensive, I think, today. But I felt like I wanted to be that because in respect to you guys with your beautiful questions and to try to really emphasize what I feel, yeah. because that's why you're listening to this pod. Not because what I feel, but because we all, <laughs> or otherwise, I mean, you understand what I'm saying here. Yeah. Well put. Yeah, so thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. See you next time. We will see you on the battlefield.
Thank you for listening to Dust War Journals. You can find us at dustwarjournals.com or on social media at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Dust War Journals. And you can find our Patreon page at patreon.com slash dustwarjournals. All music used in this podcast is made by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com.